So here's the cool thing. So new idea, which is what if you could guess a solution? For example, subset sum. You say, oh, how about the minus 2 and the 15 and the minus 10? Okay. Can I verify that your solution is the correct solution in polynomial time? Can I? Me meaning, you kind of flip coins. You kind of non-deterministically, which means randomly. You find some solution randomly, fast. Bloop, here's a random solution. Can I verify that solution works in polynomial time? Can I do it for subset sum? Yes. You give me some subset, and I have to do at most a linear pass to either add it or not add it to my sum. So you know a pass across all the numbers is a linear pass if I hit every number. So I'm only, I'm saying, choose this one. It's like a keep. I choose this one and this one and this one. Do those add to 0? Yes, they do. I can check that in polynomial. So subset sum is in the class that I'm describing called NP, non-deterministic polynomial. What it means is you guess the answer randomly, non-deterministically, but I can verify it in polynomial time. OK? So that's called in NP. So subset sum is in NP. You with me? OK? So NP is like a class of things that I could, that might be really hard. Guess one, but guarantee it here. Here's one, here's a sample, here's another example, not on this slide, OK? That, that is a very simple. Let's say I have a tree of chess. Ooh, chess is ridiculously large, OK? Chess is an exponential game tree, exponential game tree. Now you say, Dan, I have a perfect strategy for chess. So is verifying your perfect strategy for chess in NP to confirm that your strategy works on every case and wins every game that it says it'll win, guess what I have to do? Visit every single chess game and see if it wins all the games that it says it would win. That's not in NP, right? A chess solution saying I can win every game or win all the games that I say I can win, play perfectly, is not in NP because I have to visit an exponential number of games, which is a lot, to be able to verify it. But now, what if you claim my chess thing will win the first game? I have a chess algorithm that will win the first game. Is that in NP? Yes, it is. I play one game. That's 40 moves. I'm done. There's not an exponential number of moves in one particular game but there's an exponential number of total games. So you say, Dan, I have a game that'll win the first game. Really? OK, let's test it. <laughs> Did I win? Well, then I proved that you would win in the first game. Now, I didn't prove it would win in all cases, but I proved it would win at least one game, and that won at least one game. Okay? So I should probably change it to say at least one game. Okay? I can prove it just playing one game. If I did, you got it. If I did, you didn't. So that was an easy test, a linear test, a polynomial type test. So verify you win at least one game. Sorry, the, I should say the first game. I should say the first game. That's really what I'm doing. I guarantee to win the first game. To test that, I can test, verify that in polynomial time. But to win all the games, I have to test way more than just a linear number of things. So that would be not an NP. OK. If you are in NP and you are this other category, which is called the hard, the hardest problem in the set of problems, so hard so that everyone else can reduce to you. If you solve your problem, this hardest problem, everyone else in the whole group can reduce to you. And my analogy for that is, you know, you say you've got an algorithm to be able to have a Roomba go around and clean all the carpets of the world, OK? Carpet that has a really narrow hallway, it has cats around, or this. You say, that's fine. I'm going to come up with the hardest configuration ever, right? A really thin stairways. And I say, if your Roomba can solve my hardest problem ever, then you can solve all the easier ones. Does that make sense? So all I have to do is solve the hard one. If your guy can solve the hardest one, then everything else is just a sub, just a, you know, a fraction of this in some way. So I can take your easier one and say, well, it's just like the harder one, except I don't have that case. I don't have that case. So by saying it's the hardest one, it means you're the hardest one in the whole group, and everyone can use your algorithm for doing it, OK? So if you are both the hardest one in NP, you know what being in NP means, right? You're both in NP, and you are hard. You're NP hard. You are the hardest guy there, then you're known as being NP complete, OK? And that means you are, that's a critical set of things that are NP complete, OK? Let me show you the next slide now. The fundamental question of computer science, 
This, I'm trying to summarize a year of a complexity theory in one, two, in two lecture slides, which is almost impossible. We're, we don't know whether the set, the set of p problems, polynomial problems, and the set of np complete problems are disjoint. Is it the case that these things that we think are hard are hard because of some fundamental nature of them or because we haven't found it yet? Maybe there's a polynomial size solution for subset sum that we haven't done yet. We just haven't found it yet. It's out there, we just haven't found it yet. So the question that all computer scientists who are in the theory field would love to know, in fact, all computer scientists in general, I would go on, on record as saying, is whether the set of p problems is the same as a set of np problems. Okay? Is p and np the same? Um, if p is not equal to np, then they get the picture on the top right, which is here the size of here the whole thing of np problems. Here's the whole class of things that you could remember. Np means you can guess a random answer but verify it in polynomial time. Then you'd have the set of p problems that are solved, ones that are, you could even solve them in polynomial time, not, not just verify, but solve in polynomial time. But there's a different group of NP complete problems that are fundamentally different. That's if p is not equal to NP. So we would love to know that. We can stop looking. Somebody has proved that they're not the same, and I can stop looking for clever solutions to these really hard problems. But because we don't know yet, we continue to look for really efficient solutions to NP complete problems. But here's the amazing thing. NP-complete problems means all we have to do is find a fast solution to one of them, and then all of them fall. Isn't that amazing? Imagine, like, you all had hard, you know, you, are, you all had, most of you had really hard carpets. And we have a set of carpets that are the hardest carpets ever. If my algorithm can solve on any of these carpets, any one of them, then it means that everybody gets to, be, gets to work. It's so powerful that you solve one of them, and they all fall. They all then have, I have a polynomial solution to subset sum, I'm done. Every other mp complete problem is solved. Isn't that a powerful idea that you solve one and you solve all of them? Isn't that really cool? Here's another example of mp complete problem, the traveling salesman problem, which is you want a, a salesman who needs to take a map, a map of cities, like you'd have an airplane map, who needs to visit all the cities and then come back in the least time. There's a distance between all these cities. There's a time between all the cities. You've got to visit all the cities, exactly once, and no more than once, and come back. So how do you go? Should you go to Chicago first, and then New York? Do you go to the Eastern Seaboard? This is a real problem people have. I've got to visit all these cities. What's the order that you make your trip? It's a very reasonable question. But that is just as hard. That's MP complete in just the way that subset sum was, in just the way the satisfiability question of what trues and false values you have so that this matrix of ands and ors and nots ends up being true. Is that cool? If you solve any one of them, those three, the other two fall. Isn't that amazingly cool? So that's what it says in the bottom right. Solving one solves all of them. This has fundamental ramifications for cryptography, because there are some problems in cryptography that make use of the fact that some things are hard. If we solve one of them, all of a sudden, the, your passwords may be in question, because many of the algorithms are hinging on the it's fact that it's hard to do some things. Isn't that interesting? All right, I'm going to show you two cartoons that are really fun that you can now get from XKCD thanks to this work. So. Here's a wonderful cartoon, and I, I really think this is just a delightful, uh, delightful summary. Now that you know what NP completes are, problems are, and you know tra traveling salesmen, and you know subset sum, look at this guy. Here's a set of appetizers, and the conversation goes like this: We'd like exactly fifteen dollars and five cents worth of appetizers, please. Uh, exactly. Uh, sound like subset sum, right? Uh, here. These papers on the knapsack problem might help you out. It's right, like knapsack. Maximizing is similar, right? But it's also another NP-complete problem. Uh, listen, I've got six other tables to get to. Uh, as fast as possible, of course. Uh, do you want something on the traveling salesman? Now you know why this is funny, see? The person, they're giving the person an NP-complete problem at a restaurant. Isn't that hilarious? It's very funny. It's that we, that's what we, we think that's it. Okay, next one. So here is, here is the map, a graph talking about traveling salesmen. The brute force solution is you're, having, you're kind of randomly choosing, well, what's the number of permutations of visiting those guys? N factorial. So I have to visit every one to see if I'm the fastest one. So the order of growth is order of N factorial. That's huge. Well, then there's a dynamic programming algorithm, and that has a different thing, but that also has some trouble. <laughs> Versus selling on eBay. Order of one, which means constant. Get it? You don't have to do any search at all. For the number of cities, you sell on eBay. And <laughs> the guy's like, still working on your roof? Yeah, be quiet. 
This is, this is it. Steelbrook is the, okay. All right, we're done. And now we're going to do the last one on decidability.